that that was basically the the uh, doctor's orders from Doctor Morris. <laughs> doctor <laughs> Boris. I wonder if there is a doctor called Boris. If we've got any listeners that your doctor is called Boris, please uh, <laughs> yeah. please send us a picture of him. This is the Extra 10% Podcast. Helping you get paid tomorrow for what you do today. Invite John Holowaty and Mark Hudson to join you at the breakfast table, ride with you to work, or just randomly stumble across them in the afternoon. Let's get the extra 10% out of your day. We're live, we're back. Back, back. We are back. It's been a week. And uh, a crazy week, nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely insane, right? Um, I don't know where where do you start? Where do we start on this? You start. I mean, I'm in I'm in the Canary Islands. You're in the UK, so I know last night they shut down all the pubs. Did they shut down the pubs? Like, was it was it kind of like a last orders thing? Was it? Yeah, like- they dragged everybody out. It was like the SWAT teams landed, and it was like the bars came down. And if you're in the pub. That was it. You stayed in there now for six weeks, which could be a great thing. And if you were out, you couldn't get in. The bouncers turned you away at the door. Uh, no, I think, I think it was more a case of, um, yeah, shut up tonight. Shut up. <laughs> it was like, shut up shop tonight, basically, when, as soon as you can. That, that was basically the, the uh, doctor's orders from Dr. Morris. <laughs> doctor Boris. I wonder if there is a doctor called Boris. If we've got any listeners that your doctor is called Boris, please uh, <laughs> yeah. please send us a picture of him. But no, um, what I did think was good, and maybe it is worth touching on, is yeah, a week a week ago we were sort of like um, I guess alluding to the fact that yeah, these are kind of weird times, but maybe it is a time to kind of hit pause, hit reset, and look at life and go yeah, am I working in the business I want to be working in? Is this a time to maybe readdress my goals? Things like that. One of the things that happened kind of last night with regards to obviously Boris Johnson saying pubs are closed, restaurants are closed, is um, they also, the other guy, I can't remember his name, who's like the chancellor, he announced like billions and billions. Boris Becker? (laughs) Yeah, just all the Borises. Uh, (laughs) Um, The actual Boris family. Um, but yeah, he announced like billions in funding um, for like businesses. So I think like things like VAT are being deferred. So like you don't have to pay the next quarter's VAT until I think six months later or something like that. Um, I think business rates, uh, a load of different things. Also, what I did notice, um, and maybe we can link with this podcast, this video on Facebook and Instagram and different things like that. Um, is Facebook also announced like a hundred million, I think, in in like grants, so that you can apply. I think they're giving it out to thirty thousand businesses that are eligible. Um, I don't know much more about it than that. I just got sent a link last night by my brother. Uh, but yeah, I think Facebook are issuing grants. What those grants are or not, I don't know. Are they going to give people money in Facebook ads? I don't know. Or are they going to give them actual cash? I'm not sure. Um, but that was the, so. So I think one of the things the outcomes was. The guy kept saying the word um, in uh, unprecedented times, and this is unprecedented measures. He said it about 50 times. Um, is that like the government basically was saying if you have employees and they can't physically do anything, like to earn you money as a business, we will pay 80% of their wages so that you don't have to fire them. So we will essentially pay for them to be at home, you know what I mean? Well, you know, so yeah. that you don't have to kind of. So, that's pretty amazing, um, you know, that the government is sort of stepping in and doing that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't know much else about it. Like I say, other than um, I watched like a, a really quick highlight of the announcement yesterday, and it was just a case of, yeah, pubs, clubs, bars, anything like that, you're, you need to shut. I guess it's where people would go, like gatherings. Gyms are the same, I think, as well. Anywhere where there's more than sort of five to ten people going to be in one spot, um, shut. And then... I mean, I don't even know why this is turning into like a news report channel. Like I'm <laughs> updating you the world. The <laughs> yeah, they did like. Yeah, I need like a piece of paper to like to shuffle. <laughs> I know, they probably don't shuffle paper anymore in the news, do they? I've literally not watched the news in so long, but I'm guessing they have computers. Did they shuffle their iPads? Bang them on the. No, bro. I, what I do know is we are. I'm, I'm seven days ahead of the UK <laughs> over here, so this was all started. In the future. Why? What happens? What happens in seven days? Tell <laughs> me. Exactly what happens. 
So, um, yeah, seven days ahead. I can tell you interesting things that has happened here. And I don't want to get all political because everyone's got their own views. I think the other thing is we've got to be so careful. Like there are a lot of gags floating around and um, it is it is that time where you can get a little bit carried away with the banter and having a laugh. And, uh, you know, we, we've actually said off the record on this podcast, like we need to make sure that we're not saying insensitive things. And just because we are stupid. We, yeah, I don't want to say <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I don't make out of ourselves all the time, yeah, so it's very easy. Don't want to say something stupid. Don't want to say something insensitive. So if I do pause before I make any comments, then you'll know that there's like a little mischievous mosquito floating around my brain. <laughs> so, so I'm going to try and suppress any stupid thoughts that come in. But I, I want to. It, we. It's like we've got bad gag Tourette's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah. I think we we got number one. Take it super serious. Like this is is gonna be, I think, a lot bigger and a lot um, a lot more challenging than people have realised. And yeah, sure. listen to the government guidelines. Do as you're told. We've been on on lockdown in the Canary Islands for the last seven days. So everything that's just been put into the UK has been here seven days. So gyms closed last week. Uh, pubs, bars, restaurants. The only thing that's open is supermarkets and the doctors and hospitals and things like that. So I've had a really interesting week. I, I, just, I just thought this is an opportunity for me. I, I'm going to just dive into it and get as much stuff done as I can. So my number one tip, first of all, is don't panic. Uh, there's no point going out there, panic buying, toilet roll and stuff that you know, you're just depriving other people from it. The one thing I can say is the supermarket shelves are still full of stuff here. Maybe it's the Spanish attitude of relax and, you know, it'll all be fine. But no one's hoarding stuff. No one's buying things. Like the supermarkets in the UK are not closing as far as I'm aware. So don't go out there and just buy a load of stuff that you're not going to use. I, I mean, I saw something the other day like... Um, about a toilet paper in 2030, someone will be opening toilet roll that they bought in 2020. So, um, you know, it's just ridiculous this, this what's, what's going on. So think about other people before you buy, buy all that stuff. And don't panic. Like when you panic, think about any time you've ever got into a panic situation, you make really stupid decisions. So that'd be the first thing. The second thing is, right, what can I get from this? What can I achieve? What can I do? How can I turn this into a win? How can I turn each day into a win? How can I turn the week into a win? And then overall, how can I turn the general situation into a victory and come out of it as a champion? And my thing was like, right, I can learn, I can try and learn Spanish. I can play my guitar. I can learn some new songs. I can do some con, I can film loads of content. I can get all the stuff that I've needed to do for a long time. I can get all that done. Yesterday, I, I just filmed so much stuff for some projects that I'm working on for personal trainers. And it was just so cool because all my kind of distractions have been shut down. I can't go anywhere. I even got stopped by the police yesterday for going for a run. I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've been stopped by the police a few times in my life, but uh, only a few. But this was, uh, this was an unexpected one. I, you're not allowed to go for a run. So uh, I was running. Luckily, I was smart about it. I, I knew that you weren't, so I kind of had a loophole in my mind. I took my bank. Well, I'm just walking fast. No, well, yeah, that was about my, that's my running speed. Uh, <laughs> these little legs, these little trotters. So um, I, I, I got, to, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I know the police are probably out there. So if I take my bank card, worst case scenario, because they are handing out fines, I could pay the fine instantly. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, no. I thought if I've got my if I've got my um, my card, I can say, hey, I'm running to the shop. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get there, get back. So first roundabout, there was the police, and he called me over. He was like, come over, uh, don't get too close. And uh, where are you going? What are you doing? I was like, look, I'm just running to the shop. So that was it. I went to the shop and walked back. But um, that's it. It's it's crazy and just just. What did you of, buy in the shop? Because you weren't actually going to the shop. So I, know, I just got a bottle of sparkling water. I, <laughs> I really I treated myself. So um, 
that was that was weird like to be able to say like you're not allowed to like the the pools are closed they're all taped off the parks are closed the beaches are closed gym so it's like in home workouts i've been working out on my balcony um that's not in home that's out skipping rope and and a towel that's yeah. it it's uh, it's madness but you know what there is so many good things that have come from this week because i've focused on what i can do not what i can't do the other tip I would say is get super organized. Don't let the, the, the day, I've had a couple of times where I've started scrolling and rolling and messaging and watching this and watching that. And then before you know what you're like, you've fallen into this vortex of Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and two, three hours have passed and you're like, whoa, what has happened? And especially now our news feeds are clogged up with probably 90% coronavirus stuff whether it's serious stuff or it's just all the gags that are flying around about it. Um, yeah, the topic's out there. The topic yeah, is the there. topic's out there. So, um, you know, it's... Um, by so, the way, how, 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 um, we, we've obviously sent some, get some stuff to each other and no, nothing too insensitive, actually. But the people's creativity is off the record. But how funny was the, the, the lasagna one? <laughs> yeah. Well, after, I mean, where did you get that from? Can we link it? Whoever, yeah, where, I, wonder, I wonder if I can play it now. My, my brother sent it to me, but it's just, out of all the ones, it's like, it's not sensitive at all. And uh, let me see if I can well, find yeah. it. Yeah. You, you see me in our group chat, actually. Uh, I think this is done. It, it was a good gag, to be fair, as in like, yeah. Do you think you can hear yeah, it? Let, let, maybe I can play it on here now. Let me yeah, just try it. Uh, I'm going to crank up the volume. Can you hear this? I'll tell you. Also, just so you know, um, my... Go on. Could you hear that? Yeah. Also, yeah. just so you know, um, my sister, her boyfriend's um, brother, works for the Ministry of Defence and one of the things that they're doing to prepare, and this won't affect London, this will be everywhere, they're basically worried that people are going to get stuck indoors without any food. So one of the things that they're doing is they're actually working on making a massive lasagna. Um, so they're actually, at the moment as we speak, they're building like the massive lasagna sheets um, and they're just going to start making the layers uh, today. Uh, and then hopefully, like obviously, put the put the bolognese on, and then put the sheets on top. But they're having to make the special sheets, obviously, because they've not got one big enough. Because they're making the lasagna the size of Wembley Stadium. <laughs> so how they're doing it is they're actually putting the, the underground heating at Wembley. That's going to like bake the lasagna, and then they're going to put the roof across. So it's like to recreate an oven. Um, and then what they're going to do is they're going to like carry that. Um, they've got loads of drones, and they're going to like lift it up with the drones, and they're going to like like cut off little portions and like drop them into people's houses um, just so to make sure everyone's eating still and no one dies, which is obviously quite sensible. But yeah, I think I'm looking forward to that because I do quite like lasagna as well. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope that that was one of those gags where we've listened to it and go, hey, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. And then everyone else who's listening now is going, what the hell is that? It was the worst. The uh, the thought that's gone into it though, like even like the the heat, underground heating at Wembley Stadium. Yeah. So what would you say then? Obviously, in these would you call them troubling times? Maybe not troubling times, but just different times. Is like what would you see, say has been good about the last seven days then, from your perspective? And then I'll sort of chip in for mine as well. Like what? Yeah, what would you say would be good things about this whole situation? Yeah, first of all, just like to, to go back to it again, like the sent, you know, people are struggling with this around the world. So I think the worst thing about it is obviously lives are at risk and people are losing their lives. So that's, that's nothing to. Um, yeah, it's not, no, nothing light about that. Like, as in that. No, yeah, there's no light, there's no good that obviously comes from that. But in my point of view, I, I just think like human beings, especially British people, um we have this mentality of like let's just try and find the fun let's just try and like find the you know just just i don't know what's the word make the best of a bad situation so there's obviously that angle i think it's great seeing people coming together human beings connecting i'm in this group for tenerife that is on lockdown a friend of mine sarah set up the group and 
the, the, there's 3,000 people in there and all the artists that are on the island are like doing Facebook lives in there, performing. People are trying to keep keep people's spirits up. So that'd be the first thing. That, that's been a great thing that's come out of it for me is human beings rallying together and trying to support each other. There's been an elderly couple I noticed in the group that have been stuck on the island. They're like in their 80s. They're, they're isolated. They can't get home. People in the group are like, right, how can we help this couple get back yeah, to the yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff has been cool for me personally. Just being able to get shit done. Just being able to like, a lot of my business is, um, is doing this, doing that, kind of moving here, there and everywhere, bit of traveling, jumping from one thing to another. And this has really just, it's forced me to be present. It's forced me to stay here. It's given me loads of time that I didn't realize I actually had. And I've well, maybe allowed- Maybe you didn't have that time. Like as in, maybe you didn't have that time. And now this is the first time that you've not, like you say, you can't go anywhere. That's forced. So you, you're sort of, because how I was looking at it as well, and I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but it just, it just sprung an idea. was like, this is going to pass at some point. So are you going to be, uh, I don't know what the, 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 the saying is or something like that, that, that somebody, I'm sure you told it me that someone told you about when the tide goes out, you see who's wearing pants or something like that. I can't remember what. The I, I didn't tell you that one. Trust me. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it was something like that. Anyway, the point of what it is, is that <laughs> like, you see is wearing... yeah, I can't remember. I'm well, sure. I get it now, but yeah, I get it. I is get that it. like the, this, epidemic is going to pass and they're going to be people that put time in um in this like six week period or whatever it is and then when they're, they're going to hit the ground running a bit like when you start a new year there are people that were working on their new year from november and so when january came along they hit the ground running and they sort of overtook everyone very quickly is a similar sort of thing in fact it's very likely that a similar sort of thing is going to happen this time is that the businesses that go throw the toys out of the pram and sort of not give up but kind of go in a bit of a huff because things haven't quite gone right. It's like, there are other people that are going to look at the situation and go, well, we're all in the same situation. So I've got two choices. I either sit and do nothing or like you're doing exactly what you're saying is go, right, well, I'll put this time to good use so that by the time the six week thing passes or eight weeks or whatever, however long it is that you hit the ground running at that point And you're not, you know, in the water when the tide's gone out and your pants are down. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I and you're right, the, the one thing, and this is for with or without this crisis, the one thing that everybody has got in life is 24 hours in a day. Every single human being has got 24 hours in a day. So that has not changed. So what you do with that 24 hours is either going to take you towards your goals or take you away from your goals. One of my goals years ago was to learn Spanish and I never got around to doing it. And, and now I've got I've no excuse not to spend at least an hour a day just listening to audios and trying to trying to learn the language. This is great for me to focus on something because I struggle sometimes with this. Um, I know for a fact it will pass. Everything passes. Eventually, normality, whatever normality is, will resume. And you want to be in a position looking back going, look what I did, look what I created, look how I maximized this opportunity. Some people... And, and, and I always say this, whatever you do will compound, you'll get double of it later. So if you get, if you do nothing, you will get double of nothing later, which is right. work. Right? If you do something, you'll get double of it later. So you can maximize this time. You can maximize your energy. For me, it's just given me, given me opportunities to create content that I've been putting off creating. It's been giving me opportunities to read books that I've not finished reading, listen to audios, connect with people, follow up with people. Hey, there's the other side of me that goes, you know what, go to the supermarket, get a, a crate of beers, sit on the balcony in the sunshine, put your favorite album on, kick back and and just enjoy the moment and, and and people will do that and there's nothing but maybe there is time for that as well like everything's the yeah, 80 points it's like you could there's do that no 20 judgment on that as well there's no judgment on that like anyone people are going to do what they're going to do they're going to they're going to they're going to kind of follow their own path on this but the way where i'm at on my journey right now this is my time to i'm just going this is my time to maximize what i want to want to achieve in this well, thing, however long it lasts and we don't know right we don't know how long it's gonna last yeah and it's like we always talk about you get paid i mean this podcast i think the subtitle of it 
is like, you know, get paid tomorrow for what you do today. And it's like, we always know that you get paid in 90 days or what's happening to you right now. Obviously this is slightly different with the coronavirus sort of epidemic, but let's say just a bit before that, what was happening to you then was sort of the sort of catalyst for that was what you did 90 days before. So the same thing's going to happen is three months from now, things are going to be happening to you, whether that's your business is growing or it's going smaller or whatever, or it's staying the same. Um, and the reason for that is depending on what you do today. So like you were talking about connections there, nothing in this uh, epidemic is stopping you picking the phone up and talking to other businesses and saying, hey, look, I'm not trying to sell you anything right now because I appreciate you're in a boat where you can't you know, buy, let's say, because you're not getting an income. But I just thought I'd keep this relationship going. I'd keep talking to you because that's one of the things that's kind of happened to me uh, in this last week is, um, is we've had two scenarios have basically happened over the last week is sort of half of our clients. Cause a few people have asked me like, Oh, how are you guys getting on? You know, how are you affected by this? And, um, basically we've had two scenarios, half the businesses have rang us up and gone, um, you know, we should have built a website six months ago, a year ago. We should have diversified, diversified at that point so that this wouldn't have affected us as much. So let's do something now. So they're investing in this time, which, you know, is great for us as a business. So we're still flat out like working and we're fortunate enough that we can all work from home and we can all use Zoom calls to talk on meetings, stuff like that. Um, but then the other half businesses are ringing us up who are maybe very close to buying a website um, and they've rang us up and gone, oh, we're going to wait. We're going to sort of see how this plan pans out. And that's fair enough, depending on what, where the business is. But for our business, it's kind of meant we've stayed at the same level but we've definitely not slowed down. We've really tried to go, all right, let's call businesses, speak to them and see if we can help them out because we're fortunate that the, the world we play in is the online world, which isn't as affected by, um, you know, in fact, it almost thrives in a situation like this because that's why, the, who are the people that are hiring the most right now? It's Amazon. It's like, it's delivery companies, Uber Eats, because they need people in this situation because people are still on the phones ordering from Amazon. You know, I've, ordered, I, do you know what, what's really bizarre is I barely order anything from Amazon in the last week. I've just decided to start ordering stuff. Like, you know what I mean? I've been ordering different, you know, things. Toilet roll. Toilet roll yeah, not quite. No, I was very fortunate. With I don't know if I said this last week, but, um, obviously little Phoenix was born three weeks ago yesterday. So a week or so before then Lauren, my partner was like, we need to kind of be prepared because chances are we're going to be in the house for like a couple of weeks. We didn't realize it was going to be six to eight weeks. But at the time we were like, yeah, we're going to be in the house a couple of weeks. So she, before the panic buying came, she almost set up the panic buying as in she went on Amazon was like, yeah, I'll get a hundred toilet rolls, you know, a billion nappies, you know, sort of thing like that. So that all came the week before he was born. And so we were very fortunate that we'd panic bought without meaning to, if that makes sense. We were just preparing that we were going to be in for a few weeks anyway um so we have plenty of toilet roll if anyone needs it <laughs> uh, yeah we can brand it we can uh we can john and mark because no, i don't i don't know if i want people sort of you know using toilet using that we definitely won't, won't put our logo on there because it's just not not that we want to go but gonna that's what I, then that you mentioned actually the um the other cool thing is a little bit of a reflection piece on like you know you're in you're in this situation now and thriving from it because of what you did weeks ago, months ago, years ago. So I, I've been banging on for 10 years now with my business about you need a plan B. If all your eggs are in one basket, then, you know, especially when I was a trainer, I was always looking like this is a great plan B for me. My plan B became a plan A. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our business is thriving through this scenario. Yes, there are some people that are, uh, panicking about their health we have a health product yes there are some people that are panicking about their income or not panicking but you know exploring there are, i think there are people like panicking so i wouldn't um i wouldn't underplay that either just like we've not underplayed the illness side of it is that there are people that thankfully the government has brought out these measures because it's had to uh, with regards to grants and loans and stuff but there are people that are getting laid off and stuff like that, that maybe don't have many months of savings, you know, that, that you know, so that I think you're right to say the word panicking to be fair. Yeah. So we, we help people build, build business from home, build business online. One of our big conventions has been, um, has been canceled. 
And do you know what? Most businesses be like, oh no, like what we we're just we can do it all online. We're doing a, we're doing a really cool thing with Zoom. We can get a thousand people on there. I did um, a meeting the other, we actually had to put on extra online meetings because the demand for our business has got bigger because people are looking to get involved. And something dawned on me, it was like, wow, I've just spoke to 120 people on a call tonight to explain what our opportunity is. When I first started doing this, I had to drive to hotels to do meetings, to stand up in front of a room of probably 20 people. I remember driving two hours to go to Birmingham to speak to 20 people. Like now I'm sat exactly where I am here doing the call to 120 people without having to leave. It, it, it's unbelievable. And to be able to do that in Australia, 10,000 miles away from where I'm at, speaking to, to, to our team over there, it's just, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a reflective moment to pat yourself on the back and say, I'm so kind of proud and, and, and happy that I got involved in this online world when I did, when, when the naysayers were saying it won't be around forever. Facebook won't be around forever. You know, we've not just got Facebook now. We've got Instagram. We've got Zoom calls. We've got TikTok. We've got all this social, all these social platforms. So this is a time a little bit to just pat yourself on the back and say, well done. If you're thriving at this minute or, or you've got the opportunity to thrive, Pat yourself on the back and say, you know what? Well done for being open-minded. Well done for having courage when people were probably talking you out of, of doing what you were doing. I remember 2008 when the financial crisis hit. I was personal training then. That's when I started my, my PT business. People told me, don't be a personal trainer now. No one's got disposable income. No one will pay for PT sessions. Like It, it was bullshit, but... So the other thing is like, don't buy into other people's stuff, opinions that know nothing. Right. Like don't buy into other people's opinions. Number one, they don't know anything about this whole scenario. I heard a guy the other day when I was walking back from the supermarket, he was on the phone to um, somebody and I just heard the end of what he was saying and he was literally talking to someone going, yeah, that's it now. All these little businesses will crumble to the ground and die. And I was like, Bullshit. What are you talking about? Who, who, number one, who are you to tell somebody that all businesses? Will be- <laughs> yeah, done, yeah. And he, he looked like, you know what? I'm not judging anybody, but he didn't even, well, I kind of am because I'm saying this, but he didn't really, he didn't really look like he knew much about business without, without being. Well, isn't that normally the case? As in, like, he was just some guy with an opinion that yeah. I, I guarantee he wasn't a business owner. He was just a doom merchant that was like, literally being critical of, of and just telling people to give up which is the worst advice like what's the point just give up like no don't give up just dive into it go what can i do here right what's what what can i focus on it's the i mean jim Rohn's our favorite mentor uh, i know both of us like massively love his stuff and he's the guy that, that used to say it's not what happens, it's what you do with what happens. The same wind blows on us all. It's the set of the sail which determines the future. And I'm just playing those sentences in my mind every single day. Right, what's going on? I can't control it. I've stopped. Like, If the news is negging you out, stop watching it. Obviously, you need to keep updated. Maybe just limit yourself to one news update per day. Like, just... And, pr- and probably not just before you go to bed, probably do it as like, so something you can stack back on top. So I would start your day with, this is just my opinion, by the way, I would start your day with no news. So I would get up in the morning, crack on doing what you need to do. This is what I'm doing at the minute. I start my day with my meditation. I start my day with uh, my journaling and then I have a coffee. Then I open up my, uh, my phone and I, get, I start getting back to messages and stuff like that. Then I'll have a bit of news, like maybe mid-afternoon, just to see what's going on, maybe like 6 p.m. And then what I want to do is stack positivity back on top of that. Because if you go news just before you go to bed, then you're going to be thinking about it before you go to sleep. Your cortisol levels are going to rise. You're going to get stressed. You maybe not sleep so well. And then it starts that vicious cycle. So I would be choosy of the news that you listen to. Another thing as well that I mentioned to our guys that some of the people will find uh, useful 
is, and you talk about this a lot, Mark, but Facebook shows you more of what you look at. So the more negative stuff you click on, the more negative, panicky, um, sensationalism you click, the more it's going to show you, the more it's going to show. It's like the old one. I remember once looking at, um, looking at villas in Portugal. And then the next minute, my news feed was filled with properties from Spain to Portugal to Mexico, you name it. Facebook knew what I was looking at and started throwing more stuff at me. So you're in, you're, you're subliminally out of control of what's going on on your newsfeed. So you need to be careful where you click. The other thing is a lot of my guys are missing notifications now because engagement has gone so high on social media because no one can go to the pub, no one can go to uh, the cinema, nobody's like, everybody's a lot more online. So take your customers and take your team or whatever it is that you're doing take them offline from Facebook and put them in a WhatsApp chat. Like if you run a team, if you're a leader, if you've got a customer base and you want to add value, like if you're posting in a WhatsApp chat, people cannot get distracted by negativity because there's no news feed on a WhatsApp chat. So you've just got a way of, you've just got to look at it and go, right, how can I control this situation? So uh, yeah, that was just my thoughts on it. The other thing that's just come into my head, just touching on your clients that were like, some are holding fire, some are, some are hanging fire, some are like diving in straight away. So those are the people that wish they'd have done something. Like I said, pat yourself on the back. If you're one of those action takers from weeks ago, months ago, years ago, that did something. And the other thing is, don't fall into the trap of nobody's got any money. Because... Mm. People can't spend the money at the minute. They cannot spend money. There's nowhere to go. They can't eat out at restaurants. They can't go to the cinema. They can't go to the pub. So you're, don't fall into this trap of, because society will tell you everyone's zipped up their wallets. No one's buying stuff. No one's spending money. Don't buy that story. Trust me, people are still spending money. People are still focused on their health. People are still focused on their business development. Like you said, some businesses are thriving right now in this situation. So you need to just look at whatever it is that you're doing and go, how can I make this work for me? Joe Wicks, the, um, the body coach guy, I have a lot of respect for him. And he, he did a post the other day saying, right, school, schools are closed. I'm going to be the PE teacher for the kids of the nation. And I know he's got an amazing following and, um, everyone's dived onto it hats off to the guy he's just adding massive value and he's doing something for the greater good and also it's going to be amazing for his brand and amazing for his business as well and i, I love the phrase like um, self-interest is okay if it inspires and helps other people so great that he's doing it for the nation great that he's doing it for his brand as well like that is that is just one example of making this situation work for you and helping other people at the same time. So that's the way I look at it. Go, go out there and serve other people. Yeah, for sure. And on the note of, of that is like, it, it is great that enlightened self-interest, that's what Jim Rohn talks about all the time is that if you can add value at the same time that somebody then looks at you in a different light and kind of wants to return that favor in some way. So for Joe Wicks, he's going to have people that have been introduced to him now for free gained value from him that never would have maybe gone near whatever he's doing until this point. And now they've been introduced to him. That's the foot in the door that he has now with that potentially a new client. So in six months time, so going back to what we said before, it's like the things he's doing today, he's not directly benefiting from it probably just this second, but in six months time, people are going to go, Oh, I'm going to buy that, whatever, you know, recipe book or health course or whatever. Why would you go anywhere else when there's someone who's been in your living room while you were in a, you know, a bad situation, you're going to, you know, that person help you out. And so he's going to, you know, look at him, but you touched on like loads of stuff there. I even started like sort of taking notes to kind of come back to, but um, one of the things you said right near the beginning was like, um, you know, the, the man on the phone sort of saying about giving up or essentially telling businesses that, yeah, you're going to go out of business and give up. And it's like, we spoke about this before on older podcasts is that some of your friends, family, even people you don't know, are going to sort of tell you to give up on your goals because they've given up on theirs. So they need some form of way of bringing you back down to their level. So people almost get a bit scared and nervous when you start to outgrow your relationship with them. Um, and it's not necessarily uh, that you're trying to cut people off or anything, but 
what does tend to happen in business or entrepreneurship or even just personal development in general is you start to have new ideas, exciting ideas about growth, whether that be uh, health wise, whether it be financially, business wise, whatever it might be. And you start to do these things and loads of people or a lot of people will start to go, Oh, that sounds stupid. Why would you do that? You know, different things because they themselves have, have maybe tried doing something like that and it hasn't quite worked and they've not continued to work through it or they've never even tried at all because they, they're too scared to, if that makes sense. And so they tell you to give up on your goals because they've given up on them already. So you've got to be so strong to say, even though this person over here that I love, care about and respect is telling me not to do something in my heart of hearts, I still want to do it. So I've still got to keep going if that means. So that was really cool when you yeah, mentioned that. Yeah. So, it could be the closest people to you as yeah, well. Exactly. Like that's, the, that's the hardest part in all this. It's like, you know, when your parents maybe don't get, because they haven't heard what you've heard. They haven't read what you've read. It may not be your parents, it may be your partner. I was saying to someone before, like, we are so fortunate. And if you're listening to this, this podcast and you, you've got to this point and you've not exited already, <laughs> Because you're part of the shit jokes, um, you're in that. You're we're, we're the lucky ones. We're in the five percent of the of the blue sky thinkers of the people that have stumbled across personal development, stumbled across a different way of thinking, stumbled across the way of spotting the opportunity within the difficulty. Ninety five percent of the population have never even heard of personal development they've never read think and grow rich they've never read out what in the devil they've never read the secret they've never read or listened to anything by tony robbins jim Rohn, bob proctor all these amazing mentors all these amazing thought leaders that are out there they've never took some of the lessons from the religions and the spiritual stuff that's out there they're just clouded by what they see they're, they're walking around in this dark cloud so it's no coincidence and we can't judge People that are going, right, I've got two weeks off. I feel rubbish. Uh, I'm just going to fall into the, the, they don't even know that they're falling into this trap. It's almost like subconsciously, they just, they're, they're go-to thing. It's a little bit like in England when the sun comes out, we, you know, we get really bad weather. And then as soon as the sun comes out, it's like everybody, well, not everybody, but 95% of the population do the same thing. The sun comes out for 24 hours and it's like let's all have a barbecue let's wash the car let's do the garden like it's that whole herd mentality and there's nothing wrong with that they're trying to just they're doing what they want to do for them at that time but i think what we have to do in this in this current climate is try and spread a little bit of information just one podcast that you send somebody or one link to something positive or one little motivational video may just be the, the, that little catalyst that just, wow, I didn't know there was this way of thinking. I right. didn't know you could kind of change your way of thinking. Now I'm yeah. going to grow on that. Now I'm going to, right, I've listened to a two-minute clip, which kind of made sense to me. Now I'm going to listen to a 40-minute clip. Now I'm going to read a whole book on this stuff. And that's probably how you got involved in personal development. It certainly was for me. It was like a little snippet of information. It was like, wow, I, I've, I've spent 26 years of my life not thinking like this. If this would have happened to me 26 years ago, like if this was going on now when I was like 25, 24, I'd have been getting football manager downloaded. I'd have been playing all sorts of computer games. I'd have been drinking every day. I'd have been, sat, you know, do you know what I mean? I, I would have been doing so much unproductive stuff. I wouldn't have known any different, um, but it would have been a waste of time in the long run for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it all comes back. I remember sort of trying to sort of summarize as much as I can, because you can never really define what success is in any way, but you can almost define ways of getting there. If you look at the different people, you Richard Branson's, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, etc. You can kind of see what they do. And the, the things that I guess that I saw the most or the common across the board was like, they had a list of goals that they wanted to achieve. That was number one. Um, because that's just a common thing of like, if you get on a boat and there's no captain and just let it sail, it's just going to bumble around, bump into islands. Like it's, there's no definitive direction. It's the same with people. We, we need goals, like a map of where we're heading. And then the second thing is the sort of the, the confidence or the idea that you feel you can get to that destination. So Elon Musk genuinely believes he can put humans on Mars. 
So there are plenty of people out there that might have set a goal to put a human on Mars, but never really in their heart of hearts believed that they could do it. Whereas Elon Musk genuinely does. So he's got that kind of confidence to try new things and different things. And then all it, that, that are the only two things you need is a list of goals that you want to achieve and then the confidence to go out and do it. And then you've got to think, well, how do I continue the momentum of growing towards those, those goals? And it's, well, what are the things that are going to b- keep building your self-esteem, keep building your confidence to achieve it, and then you're going to find new goals when you meet new people and see new things in the world? Because I, I guess if you appreciate, if, you don't, if you've never flown first class before, you don't necessarily know how good it is. So like once you've done it the first time, then that means, oh, you get a goal and oh, well, if this is this level, I want to go private jet next time. So your goal increases and whatever. But what I was sort of uh, alluding to here is that the way that you build that confidence to achieve your goals is personal development. So if you can, and, then, and, and associations. So it's like when we, we're talking about Jim Rohn, even though I've never met him, I would class him as like a reasonably close association to me because I've watched so many videos. So like an association doesn't have to be you're sat next to somebody and they're talking about an idea or phrase or whatever. It genuinely could be. I think some of the best lessons in my life I've learned from people I've never met, you know, from Will Smith or from Jim Rohn, people like this, like you mentioned, Bob Proctor, different things. And it's like, that is key. Cause, and you know, the way you mentioned about Facebook and that like, um, you can't really control what you see. It's almost the other way. So that if you decide, I will unfollow a load of pages and follow a load of inspirational pages or business pages or whatever you're into, health and fitness and stuff, you will start to see more and more of that. And not that you have to unfriend people, but you can unfollow people on Facebook. So like if Pete or Instagram or wherever you are, Twitter, if people are like, um, always talk about coronavirus all the time, which a lot of people are, just unfollow them, Paul. You can actually unfollow people for a period of time. Like you don't have to, you know, on Twitter, I you think can that's just say cool message. It's like subliminally, you don't know that what you're seeing is being put in front of you. So now you know this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can choose what you see. So you can, you can make a decision. Hey, I'm not going to put the news on today. I'm going to, I'm going to get my news update at 6 PM. And that's well, it. Someone will tell you as well. I remember Tony Robbins talks about this in personal power. I think it, I think it's Tony Robbins. Or it might be Darren Hardy. Is that like, um, Unless there is a tank driving down my street, I don't care about what's going on. And he's like, I'm sure, I think it is Tony Robbins that says this. And it's kind of like, somebody will tell you what's going on in the news. You will not miss out. 24 hours or the most, 48 hours will not pass before someone speaks to you on the phone, texts you, sends you a Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever, talks to you on Skype and tells you what's going on. You, it's impossible in the first world that people don't tell you stuff because they almost can't wait to get it off their chest. So you will not go 48 hours without finding out what Boris Johnson has said in the last or Donald Trump. So you almost don't need to check in at 6 PM. You don't need to do that. It's going to filter through to you anyway. Um, You know, so it's kind of, I mean, the other flip side to that is, do you want it filtering because the way it gets told to you by that individual person or people might be a skewed version. So maybe yeah, you do want to go and get it from the horse's mouth. So I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, the overall picture of pubs are closing. I didn't actually need, cause I'm almost being hypocritical here. I didn't um, need to watch that video last night from Boris Johnson to know that pubs and clubs and bars are getting closed because somebody would have told me. And in fact, probably people have, you know what I mean? I just not even thought about it because I already knew the info. But it's kind of like you know. Oh, you would have known when you turned up to a bar. Yeah, to a bar. Yeah, like yeah. But it, but it's true. And and do you know one of the things as well? Like not to sort of dwell too much on the sort of doom and gloom, but it's like we going back to the associations. Is if you are on Facebook and seeing coronavirus everywhere, then you're missing all the other stuff, all the other things that are going on. There are still things going on. Um, I don't know, in Africa, and this is such a bizarre concept I was going to say, but like a giraffe has just been born this morning. That's like an amazing, beautiful thing that one day we're going to probably watch on a David Attenborough thing. Like that's happening right now as well. They don't care about coronavirus, the giraffe. He's still cracking on with his day. So what I'm saying is there are still, like I said, that was a terrible analogy to use, but there are still beautiful, amazing things going on in and amongst this kind of pandemonium. And you you, you know, if you want to look for the negative, you're going to find it. If you want to look for the positive, you're going to find it. So all I'm sort of saying, I suppose, and we're both saying is 
look for the positive. What is the positive out of this? Because we know it's not the perfect scenario. Perfect scenario is you sit and do nothing and your bank account gets bigger and bigger and you've always got a six pack. But that's not the case. So it's just another little hurdle, right? That, you know, it's... Well, it wasn't a perfect scenario before all exactly. this. Exactly. Just, uh, do you know what I mean? I think we get it twisted in the Western world, especially like this stuff has been going on in the third world for decades. And obviously there's people out there trying to help and do their bit, but it's not mainstream media. There's, there's all this, this tragedy around the world as it is. It's just that it's right on our doorstep. So more people are aware of it now. But... Uh, and again, that's something to be to be super grateful for. I'm I'm trying to like like I think they say when when you're grateful, fear doesn't exist. And right. you know, be grateful that you're in. You know, look at where where you're at now. You're in a beautiful home. You've got shelter. You've got water. You've got a uh, an electric. Look, I panned it back now, and it was just these two walls were just like propped up, and there was no ceiling in that. <laughs> I was actually like just sat on a cardboard box. So, no, but yeah, you're right. Like as in progress is. It's, it's, it's mad. Like you could be going through this situation. There's a guy that I follow on, uh, on YouTube who's, he's got a camper van, he's traveling around the world and he's stuck in Africa at the minute in Morocco and the borders are getting closed. Like you could be in a third world country going through this stuff now. So be super grateful that you're, uh, yeah, you're at home with family. Maybe yeah, you're at home with family and you've got, you've got the people around you that you, uh, that you love and care about. If you, if, if you have, or, um, you know, at least you can speak to someone. If you've not like, you've got this, you've got zoom, you've got FaceTime, you've got phone calls. Like, imagine world war two or world war one when families were getting separated for four years, people were going into the trenches, freezing cold like not eating food. Yeah, this is nothing compared to that is yeah, it exactly so we got to wake up a little bit as well and just be super grateful for for what we have but yeah the the, the ultimate message from this is choose what you, you have the choice of what you watch what you listen to yeah. and who you who you take advice from so um hopefully the, in comes out. Was, um hopefully the guy that was walking down the street giving that information was uh the person that was listening to him doesn't doesn't take that information yeah. on board. I promise you, if you're listening to this, and you'll know this, Matt, because you've got you you work with all different types of businesses. Whether you're a large business or a small business is irrelevant in this situation. You will you can find a way to thrive during this if you want to. Yeah, if you want to, that's the key. So that's what I was gonna say. And again, it's a very fine line, and 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 that's why we've always everything's a caveat of we're trying to bring the positive spin on it. And we don't, want to, we don't want to make light of the situation that is bad, illness and things like that, is that if you want to use this as an excuse for not doing anything, you absolutely will. People will look at this and they won't consciously go, oh, this is brilliant. Like no, no one's going to be like, I, I mean, this is brilliant. I can just sit and do nothing and no one's going to bug me for it. But subconsciously, that is what a lot of people will do. And they'll see this as like, well, yeah, I'm just going to sit and do nothing. But what am I expected? That like the story you told last week. What am I expected to do? This is the bad situation we're in. Everyone's doing the same. Like when you were talking about the, the, the guy who had like the drunk dad or the alcoholic dad, it's like you've got the two brothers. It's the same situation now. People are going to look at this situation and go, well, what do you expect from me? It's bad. We can't go to the shops. Can't go do this. So of course, my business is, I can't do anything. Other people are going to look at it and go, well, I can do something about it because we're in a bad situation. I never want to be in this situation again. So I'm going to diversify my business. I'm going to make these changes and stuff. So again, maybe this is the whole kind of point of this podcast is it isn't what happens. It's what you do with what happens. That's the main point of this whole situation. And like Jim Rohn talks about it, that the, um, the wealthiest people in America, if you go into their homes, they all have libraries. Whereas the poorest percentage, whatever he quotes, I can't remember don't have libraries. And he basically sort of explains that what goes in comes out. So just like when you're making something like a, a manufacturing plant, if you put bad raw materials in the machine, the product is going to be shoddy at the end. That's the exact same when it comes to your mind. If you're spending most of your day now putting good stuff into your brain and into your body, if we're talking about nutrition, but let's say we're just talking about knowledge or whatever at the, at the moment, if you're putting good stuff into your brain, then you, you sort of panic less, you, you know, you, cause you've got the confidence from the books, you know, or, or videos or what, however you've sort of digested that sort of content. And it's like fear normally comes from lack of control. 
So if you can't control stuff like this virus, for example, there are elements that people cannot control about this, like going out or seeing family and stuff like that. But fear comes from lack of control. If you've read books and you understand that some of the biggest businesses that we all know and love have come out of recession periods, then you start to think, oh, well, maybe there's a pattern here and things like Virgin or some of these big companies that have come out of recessions that you can go, oh, well, maybe there is an opportunity. But if you'd never heard that that was a thing before, that big businesses can come out of the worst times, then you almost wouldn't even try. So I guess what I'm sort of trying to instill into people is that if you have knowledge is power, basically, if you have knowledge about business, personal development, then when things don't quite go right, you're not as panicky because you've read a book about something before. You know, there are books on everything. From you've got someone else's blueprint to fall back on, haven't yeah. you? That's the, that's the key. It's like, oh, they've been there before. This is how they got through it. The exactly. other thing that will exactly. that will do that the, the other thing that will happen with this is, and it's not really been touched upon yet. I think this will happen in a few weeks or months or maybe years. But this situation will rip the plaster off for some people. Some people will be in businesses or doing jobs that they fucking hate but they haven't got the guts to quit. They haven't got the courage to go and do something else. So I remember my uh, lecturer at uni, a sports psychologist, he said, sometimes a team has got to hit rock bottom before they start making changes. And this situation, like if you're just hovering above the relegation zone, but you never hit bottom of the table, you might never ever make those changes. So you're always just putting up with the bare, the bare minimum, the bare results. But as soon as you hit rock bottom, you're like, whoa, I ain't got anywhere else to go now. So the only way is, is, is to progress, is to move up. This situation will do that for some people. Some people will be listening to this going, you know what? I've lost my job, right? Well, there you go. You hated your job anyway. This situation has kind of done you a favor indirectly. Now go do something with it. Now go, go, go pursue your dreams because you haven't got that thing holding you back. Go and do whatever it is that you really wanted to do because you... You ain't got a, a reason not to now. You've absolutely nothing to lose. So it's the dog on the, I was, I was going to say that that's like the dog on the rusty nail, like analogy or whatever it is. Is like, you know, there's uh, a guy sat on a porch, like in America, there's like porches you have out the front and uh, his friend comes along and, and the dog sat there and they're having a beer and the dog's just kind of like whining. And, uh, and after a while, the friend says to the owner, like, what's wrong with the dog? Like, why is he whining? And he's like, oh, he's, he's sat on like a, a rusty nail, like, and the, the, the friend's like, well, why doesn't he just get up and move? Like, why is he just sat there whining? And he goes, oh, he's not in enough pain yet. And it's like, right, yeah. So like you just said then, people are in a job and they love complaining about it. Oh, I hate my boss. Is this and is that. I don't get paid enough, blah, blah, blah. They're sat on a rusty nail in their, you know, story, but they're not in enough pain that causes them to go and take action. In fact, there's only two times we ever do take action is inspiration or desperation so we either are inspired by something and it moves us to go and do something or we are desperate and we do get fired or we do, you know, there is a recession hits or a coronavirus esque you know, epidemic. So yeah, I absolutely agree. I think this is the time where that rusty nail has become so painful for people that they do have to get up and, uh, and take action and they're being forced to. And I'm actually okay with that. Like, uh, you know, if, yeah, just like you were saying is some people now, who maybe if this hadn't happened, this epidemic would have lived the rest of their lives um, just sat on the rusty nail. I use that as the analogy, right? Um, but now, because it's got so painful, they've had to almost take a step back, lose the job. Absolutely, that's that's bad. It's not you know it's not necessarily a good thing. So they've taken half a step back, but it means now they can go three steps forward because they will start their own thing. Or not even. It's not always about starting your own business. It could be that they go actually, I want to look for a job in a different role. I want to retrain. I want to do something that's different and go and work for somebody else again. Like there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Um, and I think, yeah, I absolutely agree. I think this is the situation. They might give up a job that they hate. They might go to Africa and go and see that giraffe giving birth and help exactly, him. Exactly, exactly. And if, that, if that's what they love, then that's what life's oh, about. Oh, sorry. It wasn't a male giving, uh, giving birth. No, no. Well, that <laughs> would be a sight to see. Um, you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, and, that, and it's like, um, that's what success is. Success is just this idea that you wake up every day and you are grateful 
you are excited about life. It's got nothing to do with whether there's a million pounds in your bank account or whether you've got a six pack, unless those are the things that make you happy and you know make you excited about the day. Um, because equally, I, I would consider myself reasonably like money driven, but then there are plenty of people like a mother Teresa, but that's got nothing to do with them. They want to care for people and that's what gets them up in the morning. So it's kind of like, we're not saying stop working for that person because you're not owning earn enough money and go and work for somebody else or go and start your own business because you'll earn more money. It's got nothing to do. Did you hear about that nun that can't stop swearing? I knew there was a gag coming here. <laughs> no, I haven't heard about her. Mother Teresa. <laughs> So bad. It doesn't even sound similar. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, yeah, I, I haven't heard of that, thankfully. Well, I've heard of it now, I suppose. Uh, but no, it, it's true, though. It's in like the, it's, you've got to look at this situation and go, all right, if you want to earn more money, go and do that. If you want more happiness, which should be the, the ultimate goal, is where can you get that from? And I remember Jim Rohn does like a course called the One Year Success Plan. Hopefully, we're not in this sort of epidemic for a year. But what it sort of is about is, is, to like, um, and have a Google of it if you, if you sort of listen to this, but it's like, it's a reset for your life. So what he actually does in it, one of them is goal set in one of the sort of uh, modules. And he goes, all right, well, when you were a kid, what were you excited by? And then when you were like 15, what were you excited by? Then when you were 20, what were you excited by? And, and then you're 25, 30, whatever. And I remember doing this myself and like, I didn't, what are you laughing at? <laughs> can't help it you, well, you said a phrase that i've never heard in my life have a google of it <laughs> have a google of it what do you mean that's a pretty common phrase isn't it i thought we'd just say well we can say what we want but i i just say google it not have a google of it well like, i meant like have a look for it but yeah yeah that's I mean, what i mean I don't, I don't know whether you just sorry i did i was trying to hold that uh that in I could just see you like sniggering in the corner, which is funny. But no, I, I guess like, um, yeah, have a Google of it. I'm, I'm standing by that because it's like, go and have a look for it. Well, where the hell do you look these days? You look oh, on Google. You know what? You've just turned a, a, a difficulty into an opportunity. You've created your own phrase. It's, it's good. You've heard it here first. Have a Google of it. Have a Google of it. Go and have a look, lad. But anyway, the point of that, what I was sort of saying was that um, it's like, you may have almost suppressed what it is that you are excited by. Like I didn't really realize, but when I was like 10 years old, I was the one in my family who was like troubleshooting people's computers. So like if something wasn't working or like if the internet went down, you know, obviously we had dial up or whatever. I was the person setting that up at like nine years old, 10 years old for my parents. You know what I mean? And then I didn't realize until I was older when I was doing engineering that, I didn't like engineering. I just thought that that was a good career path. And actually I was into technology because I'd gone back through this sort of one year success plan and doing the, the sort of goal setting module. And it's like, yeah, at every phase in my life, when I thought of what did I enjoy at the time, it was always something to do with tech, getting a Nokia 3310. You know, it was always something to do that. Whereas there'll be other people that will look at it and go, it might be sport was the thing that was always the, the thing that got them excited or whatever. And so like, yeah, I feel this could be a time where people can do that is go right at different points in my life. When I was sort of a kid, when I was like a teenager, when I was an early adult, like what were the things that were exciting me? And then maybe that's something that I should pursue the rest of my life around that kind of idea. If that does that sort of make yeah, sense? Yeah, totally. Cause you, you had that, you had that um, realization that what you thought you wanted wasn't what you wanted. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you, it's the whole before personal development thing. It's because I almost did it. My, my, my route was going to be a PE teacher. It was like, that's where everything was kind of, you know, when they say only dead fish go with the flow, I was just going with that flow of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like sport. I'm into fitness. You know, that, that, that's the, I like holidays. That's the obvious reason. Go, go be a, a PE teacher. It was only when I went and uh, did a bit of that that I realized that it actually wasn't what I wanted to do I, I didn't want to be right doing paperwork every day I didn't want to be writing lesson plans and, and, and all that that wasn't my my I wanted to be an, an, a fitness entrepreneur was much more along the lines of what I wanted to do and being in, t in charge of giving myself a pay rise if I want to working in a different area if I want to so I'm not saying you can't do that by the way with a job you can if you find the right thing but just fit, just going away from what you think you were you're supposed to do. Uh, I think this will be a time for that. And one other thing I just want to bring up because 
you mentioned like reading positive stuff and, and, and having fun and kind of staying lighthearted around obviously a serious situation. If you get negative, if you read bad stuff, if you're focusing on panicking and fear, false evidence appearing real, all those, all that kind of stuff, it actually does impact your health. The studies have shown that when people are in stressful situations, hormones are released and that can um, cause damage to the immune system. So the serious element of this is by staying, you know, we're all in this health crisis at the minute, by staying super positive, by staying super focused on what you can control, by chilling out a little bit, having fun, you're keeping your cortisol levels down, you're supporting your immune system with a good mindset. And um, you know what, it is something that, that, that will, will help you massively through this situation is, is just staying super positive. And, and, it, and, and this, this positive thinking, it isn't fake. It isn't, um, it isn't like woo woo out there kind of nonsense. It's yeah. so, so true. It just, it just works. Otherwise, like one of the best things that this, we decided to bring the podcast back during this crisis. We'll, we'll look back in a hundred episodes time and be like, you know what? That was a catalyst for us going, we're going to be stuck in. We may as well do something with our time. We may as well try and share our, our ramblings, our, our inner wisdom, whenever that pops out. Our <laughs> yeah, we'll do that in a few episodes when, yeah. when we actually give some, yeah, some wisdom. So that's where we're at anyway. I don't know. What's your plan then for this week? Your, yeah. your first week in uh, quarantine? What, what, so, how are you going to turn it into a positive for you? I mean, the, I mean, going back to like spending time with family, you know, my, my sister has just come off a cruise. So she's actually, we're fortunate enough to have a, you know, a spare bedroom that she can stay in. So she's quarantining with us. Um, and so we've got me, Laura, and my sister, Rach, and then we've got little baby Phoenix. Um, and so it's just spending time, like I'm looking at this very fortunately and doing two things is I'm able to work like three hours a day and speak to clients, make sure they're happy, um, reassuring them, of course, that we're still, you know, working our asses off to deliver, you know, stuff for them. Um, and once that's done, I can then spend the other rest of the, you know, the half of the day, cause there's only six hours in the day, apparently, um, with my family basically. And so I'm going to enjoy that time because I never really do it. We spoke about it on the last podcast is I'm the person who is always getting the missed call. I'm never, or I'm rarely the person who picks the phone up to ring, if that makes sense, family and stuff like that. And so I'm sort of using this period to be the opposite way around. And I want to be the one calling my parents, making sure they're all right, you know, spending time with my sister and obviously Laura and uh, and the little baby, but well, I've, I've been laughing with some of the neighbors because we, we've got a, gr a group here on the street. And I was like saying, they were like, oh, when are you starting to like work from home? And like, obviously I've been on not paternity leave as such. Cause I didn't really have that, but I've been working from home from about three weeks before Lauren gave birth, just in case I had to obviously drive her to the hospital. So I'm like uh, Jack Nicholson in the shining already. Like, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like, I've been in these same four walls uh, uh, for like six weeks or something. So um, I'm used to it now. This is me. I don't go outside. I, you know, I, I open the window every so often, take a deep breath and that's, that's all I need. What about, um, Ice road truckers, will you be filming? <laughs> I, I knew you were going to bring that up at some point. Yeah, so bringing out a new season of that with my, you know, my driving beard. around the cul de sac. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that's me for for this week is spending time with family and making sure that I don't give up on any form of business opportunities. Is like keep progressing that so that I know in ninety days time I can say. Yep, you put the work in there. You met, you've got that client that maybe was teetering on the edge of, of not signing or whatever. You managed to get them signed up, which has brought X amount of income, which meant that you can employ new people, blah, blah, blah. All the, the sort of, um, I guess, domino effects off the back of that. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, spending time with family. So, yeah, what about yourself? What are you, what are you planning to do apart from gymming on the uh, um, balcony? Gymming on the balcony, skipping. Um... Do you know what? Same as for me. I feel like I've got good good routines built in from this first week, and uh, I just want to keep that going. I just uh, the good thing for me at the minute is I'm 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 sober. I'm 13 weeks sober. I've not touched a drop of alcohol. So 
there isn't really that mindset to, to chill. That's our choice as well, by the way. I don't want anyone thinking that you're like a raving alcoholic or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the choice for me. I, I, I like to start. I mean, we've done it before where yeah. we've done we've done sustained periods of, of alcohol. Whereas I, I'm absolutely leathered now. I've had a bottle of wine <laughs> this morning. You know, it's... Uh, so I, 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 I'm a big believer in, you know, sustained periods of alcohol. It works for your business, for your health, for obvious reasons. But... Um, yeah, my routine, I'm just going to build on it. I'm on my own here, so um, I can't really do anything else. Like, I'm, my, my family time is spent on uh, catching up with Vicky on FaceTime, catching up with my mum and dad, and it's just, um, it is what it is. I, I, I can't really, I don't know when, you know, we'll be able to leave and do stuff, but... Um, I'm cool with it. I'm at peace with it, and I just want to. I just want to build or or stack onto these positive habits. I'm going to bring some more things in. I'm going to add on to what I'm already doing. I don't want to totally overwhelm myself. I think there's another little thing there to be careful of. That you know, get super organized, but also don't go down the route of I'm going to do everything at once. Like yeah. just, just just pick your tasks, pick your battles for this week, pick your challenges, pick the things that are really important, and start working on them. But Chipping away at content, uh, we're bringing it, you know, we're doing more calls than we've done before. We've got some super exciting things to uh, to put out there online and just trying to lead from the front. I, I think being an example, be really, I really want to be a good example in this situation. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. That's what's motivating me. Sometimes they say, do it like, find a reason to do it other than for yourself. And, yeah, and yeah, I feel yeah. Like that. Doing it for other people is a big motivator for me. I, I, I like to lead from the front. So that's it in that sense. And um, I was going to say, like, what what do we do next week when you've been arrested for jogging again and uh, we have to do it from your jail cell, the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Jail cell. Maybe, the, I mean, I mean the, the option is, I was. it's probably not a time to have done it, but it'd have been, the other scenario would have been that I just started running really fast. Like, and then seeing if Making they it away from like, him, yeah. chase me. But then I would have got a really good workout in. Yeah, would have uh, been like something on, on the news, like the OJ Simpson thing. Where well, have you seen the, 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 um, that, that gag show? I can't remember the name of it, but what he would do, he would, you know, the, 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 the thing that they put into clothes that beeps when you go yeah, out of the yeah, shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would go into the when shop with them, and it'd start beeping. So the security guard would think that he'd robbed something. <laughs> And then he'd just be like running around the uh, supermarket while this security guard or running around the shopping mall while this security guard was chasing him. Balls of Steel, that. Even yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, great steel. show. Do you know what? I, that is an amazing... If you're looking for some some fun, Balls of Steel was an amazing program. Like, just get you out of this stuff that's going on. Watch that. Watch the super, uh, the, mar- the marketplace kind yeah, of... I think it's called Ned or Nedge. The guy that that particular sketch, like, um, yeah. but it's very good. Yeah, I, I have to admit that it's good. And also next week as well, we will we'll have to do an MTV Cribs esque um, view of what's in your fridge behind you. <laughs> yeah, I better, I better clear it out. No. Oh, it's, uh, there's non-alcoholic beers in there. I can tell you, Dorada sins. I dry right. my sins. Uh, with non-alcoholic beers. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like that. Anyway, I think. That to sort of, I guess, recap really quick is is like, look, it isn't the best situation, but like you said, it, it's never been the best situation on this planet. You know, there's not a perfect scenario thing. You've got to make the best out of every single situation. It's no different now, whether that be looking at um, life, finances, family time, whatever, make the best out of those situations. And, um, you know, be sure to subscribe. We're on Apple Podcasts nowadays, iTunes. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, IGTV. Um, we're everywhere. Twitter. Share it with anyone as well. I think that's important. Like you share this with if you think it's valuable, by the yeah, way. Yeah. And if you don't, please put bad comments below. We want to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but share it with anyone that you think just might need a bit of value or need a different. I think that the biggest thing is nudge, a little nudge in the right direction. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. Enjoy- next yeah. week, I don't think we're going to talk about this. I, I, no, no, I think we're aware that we need to make sure, you know, we were going to cover something else, but obviously this is a very current situation. Maybe we'll, we'll touch on it a bit next week, but I think we want to throw something else into the mix that is yeah. totally different to this, just to give people a break from what will be a, a, 
a challenging but opportunist uh, seven days. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess we'll see you uh, see you guys next week. The Extra 10% Podcast. Remember to like the John and Mark Facebook page on Facebook or visit johnandmark.co.uk for exclusive updates and content. Why not share this podcast with a friend and help them get paid tomorrow for what they do today?